The expression syntax we've seen used for filtering can be used to do a calculation as part of the retrieval, or actually to retrieve calculated results. It's a great feature. Uh, one, uh, one of the drawbacks of the feature is it's not something that's going to be historized. This is something that we're just going to pull from the archives and calculate on the fly. So it's great for on-demand calculations. Uh, if you do want to provide a history, something's actually stored you know, with the rest of your data, permanently, that would be something you do as a performance equation tag. So the performance equation syntax we're using, of course, could be used to create that performance equation tag. That way you'd actually have a history of the results. Now, now if you just jump to this topic, by the way, and you're not sure what we mean by performance equation syn uh, syntax, please take a look in the help directory under Program Files PyPC. There's a file called PE Reference. This is where you can learn all about performance equation syntax and all about the, the built-in functions that we support within performance equations. It's a series of functions designed for people who are working with real-time data. So for example, one of the functions, a function you really won't find in Excel or VB or something, it's called tag max. It will take a few arguments. The arguments are the name of the pi tag, the start time and the end time. And what we're going to do is return the maximum that came in in real time for that tag between that start time and end time. So let me demonstrate how I can make use of this. Uh, I would like to see how long in the last 24 hours, we, or what, excuse me, what the maximum was for this tag CDT158 in the last 24 hours. Now I know this is a random tag that goes between 0 and 250, so I'm guessing it's going to be close to 250, 200, 250, something like that. So we're going to do this by choosing archive value first. There's many ways we can use this expression. This is one of the functions that will support it. As you can see, each of these retrievals is, well, it can be either done for a pi tag or for a pi expression. We've been ignoring that so far. This time, let's go ahead and choose it. The expression, well, we could type the expression right here. You know, if I wanted to, I could just start typing tag max. And then if I, you know, if I knew what the expression syntax was, I could go ahead and do that right here. But instead of doing that, I'm going to make a cell reference to that. So I'll just click on this. That's my cell reference to the expression. The, the timestamp is going to be the timestamp for which the, well, let, let me explain. That timestamp is going to be the timestamp that we regard as the current time within the context of this calculation. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, if I select this asterisk, that, that stands for current time with pi syntax. So within the context of this calculation, current time is going to be, in fact, current time. So asterisk minus one day will go back one day. Now, if I had changed this, or if this were something else, like let's say this were T, standing for today at midnight, then within the context of this calculation, asterisk would be today at midnight. So uh, this, this would actually give me a calculation from yesterday at midnight to today at midnight. We'll, we'll talk more about that later on. I'll go ahead and show the timestamp. My output cell is where I first showed up right here at B8. I'll go ahead and say OK. And this is now returning that calculation for me. So we've looked at the data. We've come back and said the maximum is 204.9. Now take a look at the timestamp here. The current time, you know, when I actually did this, is 1149. So we are actually using uh, this, at this 1149, that current time, in the calculation. Now, if I were to change this, for example, to, oh, let's go with T. That stands for today at midnight. When I press return, two things happen. First of all, now we're returning a calculation that shows me the result as of today at midnight. So imagine, you know, you've got to put yourself in the shoes of the calculation here. The calculation is being directed to return from the last one day asterisk minus one day to the current time. Well, what is the current time from the calculations point of view? Well, that's determined by the timestamp you pass here. So T stands for today at midnight. So the calculation thinks, oh, OK, it's midnight. I'm going to return the last 24 hours ending at midnight. And if I were to go with uh, Y plus seven hours, that's yesterday at 7 o'clock in the morning, then that's the result we're going to get. Yes, yeah, see, that's, that's actually a different result. That's 249. So the maximum for that particular 24-hour period ending at 7 a.m. was 249. 
which of course is going to be different depending on you know what timestamp you put there. Now, there's another subtlety that we need to go over, uh, as if that's not subtle enough. Here's, here's another one. We have a second way we could have retrieved this. Instead of retrieving it as just a single result, we could have retrieved sample data. Now, when retrieving sample data, then it gets a little even more obscure what the interaction is between this start time, end time, and time interval and the start time and end time that you see in the calculation. So let me, let's just go through and, and do an example and I'll explain. I'll choose sample data. I'm going to put that sample data right here. And what I'm interested in now is looking at uh, not just the most recent, uh, se the most recent one day, but looking at the maximum for the last seven days at one day intervals. So I'll choose sample data for my tag name. I'm not going to supply a tag name, but in, instead a pi expression. The expression is the same expression we saw before. Tag max, the maximum of that tag for the last one day. Start time is going to be minus seven days. The end time is going to be the current time. And the time interval is going to be one day. That means we're going to do this, this calculation seven times, essentially. Uh, it's going back seven days We'll do the calculation as of seven days ago, 6, 5, 4, 3, up until the current time. And I'm not sure if we're going to, this may be an equals or a greater than. I'm not sure if this is going to return eight results or just seven results. We'll see. Okay. And, um, and that's it. Let's make sure we show the timestamps. My, my output cell is correct. Yeah, there we go. And this does return eight results. So that the way to, to interpret this is as of the 5th of July at 11.53. As of that time, the previous 24 hours had a maximum of 2.24. Okay. So this represents the end time of that 24-hour period. Okay. You notice the kind of, well, it's not subtle, but the complicated relationship between the start time, end time, and interval here and the start time and end end time in the interval here. The way I like to describe that is there's, there's really two things at work here. There's the calculation itself, and then there's the triggering of the calculation. When do we actually tell the, you know, the calculation engine here to trigger this calculation? Well, the triggering is determined by what you put here. And in this case, we're doing it, we're going back seven days, we're doing the calculation seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. That's why we end up with eight results. It's actually you know, going back seven days at one day intervals, including the end time, and doing a calculation for each one. So that's why, you know, here it is the 12th of July at 11.53. It included that most recent 24 hours in my calculation here. Well, I, I'd like to admit right here, this is kind of a useless calculation. Who would ever want to see you know, one, one day maximums ending at 11.53. Obviously, you would want to have this tied more to your shifts, for example, or your days. So instead of going back like that, asterisk minus seven days, let's, do, let's be a little bit more clever. And let's say we want to go, well, let's see, today is Monday. So let's go with the, the previous uh, Sunday. I'm going to type in sun plus seven hours. That's going to be the, the most recent Sunday or I'm sorry, wrong way around. Uh, Tuesday plus seven hours. That's going to be last Tuesday at 7 a.m. to, and I'll say T plus seven hours. Now this is a little bit more, I think, a sensible calculation. In this case, what we're saying is starting last Tuesday, that's the 6th of July, I want you to do this calculation starting at 7 a.m. last Tuesday, and then every day after that, 7 a.m. Wednesday, 7 a.m. Thursday, etc., all the way up to 7 a.m. today, the T plus seven hours. And that's exactly what it's doing. So it's saying, well, okay, the, for that 24-hour period, period ending, 7 a.m. on Tuesday, that was the max. Wednesday, that was the max. Thursday, that was the max, etc. All the way up to today, which is the 12th of July, ending at 7 a.m., that was the maximum. Now that's kind of interesting because look, look at the interaction here. If I, if I see th this scheduling here, this is the scheduling of the calculation. Remember, these three things control the scheduling. But this is the calculation itself. Look how easily I could change the logic of this. Instead of doing it uh, with asterisk minus one day to asterisk, I could just choose the start time to be the current time 
the end time to be asterisk plus one day. Now watch what happens to the results when we do that. Now, the way to interpret this is we're seeing as of Tuesday, the 6th of July, at 7 a.m., the this is the 24-hour maximum from that period forward 24 hours. So you see the relationship between the two here? There's, there's, you know, it's, it's entirely possible to get kind of, you know, confused on this issue. And if you don't, if you don't match properly uh, what your, what the, uh, the, the timing of the scheduling of this calculation is versus the actual calculation, this, you know, this could end up being confusing. And, and giving you results that you didn't anticipate. So let me go ahead and set this back. Now I know this might be belaboring the obvious, but let me show you one more thing if one more thing that might help explain what's going on. How what I'm saying is, you know, what, what we're doing essentially here is we're saying that the uh, what you put here determines how we treat asterisk, how we treat that actual current time. So what I'm about to do now is really just for purposes of, of illustration. It's not a, a meaningful calculation at all. But just to illustrate what's going on, we have a function called day. I'm going to choose that function day of the current time. And look at what we return. Well, day, day means what day of the month it is. Day of the current time on the 6th of July is 6. On the 7th, it's 7. On the 8th, you see what's happening here? As we iterate through this, asterisk is taking different values. It's taking values based on what you've chosen here. So for example, if I were to say, if I were to go back, change this now, let's go asterisk minus 10 days to asterisk minus 3 days. Now this returns a whole different set. 2nd of July is 2, 3rd of July is 3, etc. Again, this is, uh, let me put that back the way it was. Uh, look what happens if I use hour hour is always going to give me 7 because that's the hour in the day in which, you know, that it currently is. So you see what we're doing here? Asterisk is taking on different values depending on how we're, we're iterating, how we're looping through this start time, end time, interval uh, combination there.